Hi, Skylers. We're back again with Read Aloud. But now that we've finished Charlotte's Web and we're done with that unit, we're going to move on to a new unit. Our last unit was on character perspective. And our new unit is going to be on revising understanding. So I have a what, how, and why poster that we're going to go over before we start reading our new book that I'm really excited about. So the what. You need to be able to collect evidence about the characters and evaluate your understanding. So that means you need to close read and you may need to reread some things to understand what is happening in the story. And how. You're going to ask yourself, why would the character act this way? That's very close to character perspective. You're going to ask yourself, why does this match? Does this match what I already know? Then you're going to ask yourself, did I learn something new? So you may be thinking something else in your mind, but the text is telling you something different. So that means you need to go back and look at the evidence again to evaluate your understanding. And why we're doing this is to gain a better understanding of the lesson of the story. So just like we did for character perspective, we're going to continue to do our big idea and our text evidence. I know that some scholars weren't able to see my poster, and now this time I'll just make sure that I put that in our seesaw activity. So for our big ideas, they're written here. You can pause the video at any time to take a look at the big ideas, and I'm going to read them off. Ivan is a gorilla who doesn't like humans. Mac is a human who is a boss at the mall that where Ivan lives. Ivan's conflict is so far that he lives locked up in a cage. <clears throat> he lives locked up in the cage at the mall and he might be lonely. So the story that we're reading today is called The One and Only Ivan. And you can go ahead and open the PDF file just like Charlotte's Web and click view original in order to see the story. I'm going to start with chapter one. Hello, I am Ivan. I am a gorilla. Hmm. I'm noticing at the beginning of the story, which is also attached, you will find something called a glossary. And a glossary is just like a dictionary, but for a book. And it helps us to have better understanding of the words in the text. Hi, I am Ivan. I am a gorilla. It's not as easy as it looks. Hmm. I'm noticing so far that we already have some important information about the character. The narrator of the book, his name is Ivan, and we know that he's a gorilla. Names. People call me the freeway gorilla. The ape at exit eight. The one and only Ivan. Mighty silverback. The names are mine, but they... They're not me. I'm Ivan. Just Ivan. Only Ivan. I am noticing that he doesn't like the other names that the people are calling him. He likes to be called Ivan, which is his name. <clears throat> Humans waste words. They toss them like banana peels and leave them to rot. Hmm. So now I'm noticing that Ivan, the narrator, does not like humans. Hmm. I saw that in our big idea, so I'm going to stop there and write that text evidence. <clears throat> the big idea says Ivan is a gorilla who doesn't like humans. But now I know I found my text evidence. I'm going to put on page two. I see where it says humans waste words. So I'm going to make sure that I write that over here in my text evidence box. Page two. Humans waste words. I think Ivan is saying that humans just talk too much. They toss them like banana peels. And leave them to rot. Now I have my first piece of evidence that supports this big idea that, Evan, that Ivan does not like humans. Everyone knows the peels are the best part. 
I suppose you think gorillas can't understand you. Of course, you probably think we can't walk upright. <clears throat> Try knuckle walking for an hour. Hmm. That means I know that Ivan is a gorilla and he walks on his hands. And he's saying that humans <clears throat> can't do that for an hour. You tell me, which is way more fun? I've learned to understand human words over the years. But understanding human speech is not the same as understanding humans. Humans speak too much. They chatter like chimps, crowding the world with their noise, even when they have nothing to say. Hmm, I found my second piece of evidence that matches where it says Evan, Ivan doesn't like humans. He said that humans speak too much. So I'm going to add page three to my evidence. Make sure you're copying what I'm copying. Humans speak too much. This text evidence is also found directly in the book. So if you can't see my board, you can find it right in the book on those page numbers. It took me some time to recognize all those human sounds, to weave words into things, but I was patient. Patient is a useful way <clears throat> to be when you're an ape. Gorillas are as patient as stones. Humans, not so much. Hmm, I'm getting some clues about Ivan's perspective. He said that humans waste words and they talk too much. So I know in my mind that Evan does not like the humans and he thinks that they talk too much because he doesn't talk much. Let's turn the page. I'm on page four. I used to be a wild gorilla and I still look the part. I have a gorilla's shy gaze, a gorilla's sly smile. I wear a snowy saddle of fur, the uniform of a silverback. When the sun warms my back, I cast the gorilla's majestic shadow. In my size, humans see a test of themselves. They hear fighting words on the wind. <clears throat> and what I'm all thinking is how late in the day, how the late day sun reminds me of a ripe nectarine. The mightier than any human, 400 pounds of pure power. My body looks made for battle. My arms outstretched span taller than the tallest human. My family tree spreads wide as well. I'm a great ape, and you are a great ape. And so are chimpanzees and, orang and orangutans and bonobos. And all of us distant, distant and distrustful cousins. I know this is troubling. I too find it hard to believe that there is a connection across time and space linking me to the race of ill-mannered clowns. Mm. Ill-mannered clowns is making me think that that's what he's calling humans because he doesn't like them. Chimps, there's no excuse for them. The Exit 8 Big Top Mall and Video Arcade. I live in a human habitat called the eight, eight, Exit 8 Big Top Mall and Video Arcade. We are conveniently located off I-95, which shows at 2, 4, and 7, 365 days a year. That means that he's showing himself all day long, all year, every day. Max says that when he answers the trilling phone, telephone, Max works here at the mall. He is the boss. I work here too. I am the gorilla. Here's my second big idea. Mac is, Mac is a human who is the boss at the mall where Ivan lives. I found that text evidence because it says it right in the story. It says, Max works here at the mall. He is the boss. So I'm going to put the page number where it comes from. Page six. Mac is the boss. He works here at the mall. Remember, this comes right out of the text. At the Big Top Mall, a creaky music carousel spins all day. And monkeys and parrots live amid the merchants. In the middle of the mall is a ring with benches where humans can sit on their rumps while they eat soft pretzels. The floor is covered with sawdust made of dead trees. 
my domain <clears throat> is at one end of the ring. I live here because I am too much. I am too much gorilla and not enough human. Stella's domain is next to mine. Stella is an elephant. She and Bob, who is a dog, are a diff are my dearest friends. Hmm. I found some new characters, so I think I'm gonna add that to my big idea. I'm gonna add Stella and Bob. And here I'm gonna add my page number, page seven, that shows my evidence. It says Stella is an elephant. She and Bob who is a dog are my dearest friends now I have my text evidence that supports my big idea now it's going to be your turn to find that last piece of evidence that matches this big idea, but I'm going to keep reading first. <clears throat> Three of my walls are glass. Oh, let me go back. My domain is made of thick glass and rusty metal and rough cement. Stella's domain is made of metal bars. The sun bear's domain is wood. The parrot's is wire mesh. So I'm noticing that there is more than just one animal at the mall that shows off for the humans. Three of my walls are glass. One of them is cracked and a small piece and about the size of my hand is missing from the bottom corner. I made the hole with a baseball bat Matt gave me for my sixth birthday. After that, he took my bat away, but he let me keep the baseball that came with it. A jungle scene is painted on one of my domain walls. It has a waterfall without water and flowers without scent and without trees and without roots. I didn't paint it, but I enjoy the way the shapes flow across my wall, even if it isn't much of a jungle. I am lucky my domain has three windowed walls. I can see the whole mall and a bit of the world beyond. The frantic pinball machines, the pink billows of cotton candy, the vast and treeless parking lot. Beyond the lot is a freeway where the cars stampede without end. A giant sign at its edge beckons them to stop and rest like gazelles at a watering hole. So he's saying that the sign is drawing them into the mall so they can come and see the animals. The sign is faded, the colors bleeding, but I know what it says. Mac read it with his words aloud one day. Come to the Exit 8 Big Top Mall and Video Arcade. Home of the one and only Ivan, Mighty Silverback. Sadly, I cannot read, although I wish I could. Reading stories would make a fine way to fill my empty hours. Once, however, I was able to enjoy a book left in my domain by one of my keepers. It tastes like termite. The freeway billboard has a drawing of Mac in his clown clothes and had Stella on her hind legs and an angry animal with fierce eyes and unkempt hair. That animal is supposed to be me, but the artist made a mistake. I am never angry. So I'm noticing that now Ivan feels like he does not look like the sign. The sign looks very angry and he looks like he's screaming, as you can see here on this page. But Ivan doesn't feel that way. Now you're going to find <clears throat> the text evidence that supports Ivan's conflict. His conflict so far is that he lives in a locked cage in a mall and he might be lonely. You're going to find that text evidence that supports him being lonely. I'm going to read one last page. Anger is precious. A silverback uses anger to maintain order and warn his troop of danger. When my father beat his chest, it was to say beware listen i am in charge i am angry to protect you because this is what i was born to do here is my domain there is no one to protect hmm i can't wait to read the rest of this story it sounds so interesting so far 
Here's the title of my book and I can't wait to see your text evidence support your big idea.